Jesus went to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. His friends were invited and so were his family. The party had started as well as could be. People dancing and feasting with joy and great glee. But an awkward predicament soon came about when his mum came to tell him their wine has run out. If the wine was all gone, then the groom would be blamed. He would start off his marriage embarrassed and shamed. So would Jesus help this disaster pass by? Could he make things much better by finding more wine? Why involve me in this? Jesus questioned his mum. For I tell you, my hour has not quite yet come. But she trusted that Jesus would stop this disturbance. Do what he tells you, she said to the servants. Now near to the servants were standing some jars. Made for water and washing, these jars were quite large. It was normal tradition to wash before food, to avoid seeming sinful or guilty or rude. Jesus spoke to the servants. Now take those big pots and fill them with water. Right up to the top. Then he told them to draw some from one of the jars and to take it away to the person in charge. They did what he said and were startled to find what had started as water had turned into wine. The head of the banquet was shocked and assumed that this wonderful wine was all thanks to the groom. So he called him aside and then marvelled at how he had waited to bring out the best wine till now. Though the groom had done nothing, no credit to claim, he'd been saved from embarrassment, scandal and shame. And the joy Jesus brought them that day with the wine was far more than it seemed because this was a sign. Jesus was starting to show us his glory. See, this part is only the start of the story. He'd make all things much better with what he would bring. A new life, a new world, with a life-giving king. Where coming to God needs no water or washing. For Jesus himself gives his life as the offering. So all are invited, the great and the least, when he throws his incredible, bottomless feast.